Welcome to the Few True Villains Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. I am Brian, Brian Man Peacock. The sun is in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad spot, apparently. We are here, what is this park called? We are the Brick City Adventure Park in Ocala, Florida. Yep, and we are here with the Thalyandor LARPing group. Uh, that video should be, nope, it won't be out by the time this comes out. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on how much you have to edit this one. It'll come out soon because it's a lot of footage I took. Last weekend, we did an event here with these guys. I think it was just called Skull. The uh, Skull. The Skull. Um, if you don't know what LARPing is, go ahead. Because you're the LARPing guy. Oh, it is a live action role playing where basically you get dressed up in usually medieval costumes and then you beat each other with foam sticks for one reason or another. That out there. What they're doing. Those guys. Mm, that guy. Him. And you know what? It, it's uh, just like you experienced. It is kind of the nerdiest of the nerds. I got to tell you, but when I told my other friends that I was doing this, they kind of made fun of me. Oh, yeah. And they were like, oh, it's got to be guys with fake beards. And I'm like, no, it's not. No. The first thing I see when I got here was a dude with a fake beard. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It was a damn good fake beard. It was. It was. It, it's really just about having fun. I it have is, a blast every time I come out here. Probably the funnest thing you can do. Actually, this is very relevant, and I should not hit the table. This is I, very, yeah, I've had that thought. This is very relevant. Uh, I saw a post on Facebook today, and it said, the, uh, at one point, you and your friends went outside to play for the very last time, and neither one of you knew it. And us? It just hasn't happened to us yet. We have an invader. Hello. What's up? So this will be actually our first time meeting a lot of these guys besides Nico. Your name is? Parker. Parker? Yeah. I'm Jacob. Nice to meet Jacob. Brian? Nice to meet you, Brian. Welcome to the Future Villains Podcast. So, sh show them your weapon. Uh, I have a short sword and a uh, heater shield. Heater shield? Why is that a heater shield? Um... It's essentially designed by the shape. Um, okay. After a point, they used to go uh, like long teardrop style shields, but those were uh, impractical to use after a certain century. So okay, kind of switched over to smaller ones. Right, and so there is actual historical reasons why you guys do certain things. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of um, pieces here and there. Occasionally, reenactors come over here from SCA. Okay. Which but, is uh, the Society of Creative Anachronism. Yeah. For those who don't know. That's uh, is it really. Yes. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so actually where I got my helmet from. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, 7th century Viking, so I tried to stick to period appropriate materials. That's awesome. And that sword, what is that? Is that just a, a long sword? Uh, this is actually a pretty short sword. Um, okay. Some of the longer ones are uh, up to about maybe 40 inches. So it's, um, it's a little quicker. But... Right, so there's a variety of weapons, a variety of ways to fight. Yeah. This specific game actually has classes with magic and archers and abilities and Nico will probably get more into that. Oh, yeah. How did you find this? Uh, I found out about it uh, at Ocala Comic Con um, almost a year ago. Okay. Yeah. So they had like a booth set up? Uh, they were handing out flyers, and okay. uh, I just kind of showed up one day. That must have been a year I didn't go. Maybe. Or maybe we missed them. I yeah, maybe. But, uh, yeah, we, well, I shouldn't say we, but you and the <laughs> other Blood Pack guys who you'll see in the video that's coming out soon. Yeah, uh, they're they, not here today. But. Right, they're primarily Dag. Right, that's a Dagger here. And it's a different game, very similar, uh, but they mesh well together. So yeah. that's why they come up here and, and uh, participate in this game. Uh, so now, is Parker your character name? No, that's my given name. Okay, what is your uh, your character name? Oh, Tell uh, us a little bit about the character. My character name is uh, John George of Saxony. He was just sort of a roving raider. Um, traveled through the Varangian Guard and then ended up here. Oh, very cool. And see, that's a similar thing where I even, I'm not a combatant, but I decided that my character was kind of at our home base and, and here in spirit, quickly writing everything. That was my video camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since you're recording, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it, it's neat. It's very, very free, the, the lore you can make up about your characters. Oh, yeah. It goes from very historical to, uh, as you'll see, very, uh, you know, the fantasy varies. Was there, but... was there a samurai here last weekend? 
Um, I swear there was a guy in like samurai armor. Every once in a while, uh, I think Brian is uh, the guy that does cut in samurai. Armor. Okay, yeah, yeah he had like a couple. plated armor almost. It was yeah. pretty cool looking. Uh, does your class have any abilities? Um, yes, uh, fighter class. Uh, only class that can use uh, heavy armor, okay. uh, which I am greatly in favor of. Uh, stronger shields, you can repair equipment, so uh, let's say this eats two points of damage, can't use it, I can repair it back up to normal. Um, you can also recover limbs or ward yourself to fend off blows if you want to tank, okay. for instance. So if somebody breaks your armor, what does that look like when you repair it in a fight? Um, essentially, you would have to go down and then, let's say my arm... One, While being two, vulnerable, three, correct? Four, five. Yeah, absolutely okay. vulnerable. Um, and then uh, it's a five-second spell, so one, two, three, four, repair. That would okay. get one point back. But it lets you keep fighting and lets you tank again. Yeah. So, okay. So that, that's pretty much the fighter class in a nutshell? More or less, yeah. Being the tank? Um, we have uh, tough skin, which is to recover a limb. That's. Uh, I saw some people doing that last yeah. weekend. Okay. It's pretty common. Okay. Which is kind of like slamming on the ground and declaring tough skin? Yeah. Okay. And that recovers one limb. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of almost video game features to this particular game. Yeah. Which I found to be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to l learn those again. Yeah. We had not read the rules in over a year and a lot has changed. <laughs> so. Yeah. Has it been a year? Uh, it's been about a year since the last time I was out here. Huh, okay. It doesn't seem like it's been a year. Yeah, it's been about a year since I could fight, so... Okay. Now, we also have another combatant. If you want to introduce yourself. Again, this first time us meeting, I'm Jacob. Gentlemen, Castle. Brian. Welcome to the Thank Future you. Villains Podcast. I said villains with him, not heels, right? I hope so. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have two podcasts. <laughs> so, what class are you? Uh, Castle mainly stricts on fighter class, but I okay. branch out amongst uh, mages and the uh, archer okay. as well. So that's an option in this yeah, game. Yeah, you can you can take your character and you can roll with a single class. Some people do that. We have a Thalindor, or a Theodore out there where he's strictly fighter all the time. Okay. And no matter what else, like even if we need a mage or something, sorry, I'm a fighter. But Castle just likes to fight, so Castle picks whatever it needs to be done at the moment in time. So if this was a video game, he would have all warrior characters. <laughs> all his slots would be taken <laughs> up. Pretty Come much. on, guy. <laughs> it, 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 he would go with the heavy armor, two-handed, the DPS light armor. Like he'd just pick every way he. I could can't mage guys. Fighter. All my character slots are taken <laughs> up. <laughs> well, like at the event, uh, there was one quest giver who someone in your party had to be a cleric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of cool to see that you can swap back and forth between classes right. when you need to. So what abilities do things like the archer and the mage have? So with as you level up with the, uh, with the archer, you can go from converting from a bow and arrow mm -hmm. to what we have as chakrams. You might have seen those discs. Yes, those are very cool. Scenes. I got a lot of good shots of that in the video. And then from there, you can class up to having a dual wield sword so okay. you can throw all your chakram shoot all your bows while you're picking up everything you're usually you just have one little blue sword it's not much to fight with but need be you can now drop everything grab out the two swords and go rogue style with everything instead okay very cool and with the uh with the mage you kind of you level up you get more cla you get more uh spells as you level up and as well the stronger you become, the more you can add on armors for your limb, light armor, stuff okay. like that. That way the mage isn't just full vulnerable and nothing but projectiles. He can actually get into battle and stuff. We have a couple of people um, that would prefer to actually get a little more hands-on castle right. being one of them, where he'll straight up just come up and fireball someone to the chest instead of throwing it, because at least I know I actually hit you that Yeah, time. that makes sense. Um, on top of that, the mage, once they're fully classed up, they can choose... A magic spell that they happen to be proficient in and can now unlimitedly cast that so oh, okay. that comes cool. in handy as a top tier fighter or a top tier uh, wizard as well so how many events would it take to get to that level basically from what I understand is the experience goes on half points so okay. this being here this weekend you get a half point towards whatever class you're working on. You can't actually be here as a fighter and be like, I'm working on my mage. No, you have to work on your mage. Gotcha, okay. Uh, or wizard. And so you'd say in a month, if you showed up at all four weekends, you'd get at least a good two points out of it. And from there, every time, 
every month you would probably level up another class or another another level up on that class. Okay. So event wise, I think they usually do a full experience point. So if you're a four and you need to get to five and you show up in an event and you're like, I'm gonna be a wizard, you now get your full experience at the end of the day. And that's why they were asking us for classes when we first got yeah, here. Yeah, that right. way they okay. can write it down and register what you're gonna have your experience okay. towards. Okay, and you did sign in too, right? Yeah, okay. As so an we archer, both, ranger. Yeah. We were both archers, so we yeah. both have one point in archer. Because cool. I don't think they had that a year ago. When uh, They didn't have a leveling system yet yeah. a year ago. The leveling system rolled out about five, six months ago, I think. Okay. And just like the video game reference earlier, like that's what we were thinking is DLCs and just being right. like, oh, sure. Let's, when we first started doing it, we were like, are we playing with DLC rules? Like, yeah, we'll try them out. And we started <laughs> trying the leveling and we've seen it worked really well, got it's people to come clever, back because yeah. now it gives you something to work towards. It's yeah. not, oh, I'm dreading having to fight this guy this weekend. No, you're more like, yay, I get to level up this weekend. I got a new ability. I got a new thing. And so yeah, it, it encourages gives you people something. to come out. Yeah, it's not just bashing everybody. You actually yeah. get to build up. So, and then you get, you get, because uh, today is just a practice, so you get experience for practices. Yeah, as well. you get a half point for your practice, and you get a full point for your events. That's good, because it's hard to get people to come to practice sometimes. Yeah. Yes, again, makes people get I out mean, here. It, that was a thought for me today, because we've gone to practices where there's just a that few guy, people. That guy watching, he doesn't like to come to practice. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone to practice where there's not a lot of people, so today I was like, oh, I hope there's people. There's a lot of people here yeah. today. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, this, and this we actually consider a small group. Like we okay. have to do like four v fours and stuff, which is just practice runs more than actually getting to play any full games for our practices. And you'll We're, see in the video there was a good number of people. It's probably like 30, 40 people at the last event. Probably yeah, with our least, events, yeah. we usually end up getting about. I think there's four groups all together that come in, and they all have their own thing that they do every weekend, separate from each other. But mm -hmm. we're one of the few groups that I've noticed that gets all those groups to come together. The right. only time I usually see that is when they do like the autumn assaults or the the winter bash or whatever it is that uh, Dagger usually hosts huge in Central Florida. Right. And Which, those is where I that's where I've seen the most come. But this yeah. is probably the second mountain. It's way the numbers are way off. You got hundreds of people, and then you sure. got maybe like thirty people, but. The fact that people are out here doing this nowadays when technology is reigning supreme, I love. It's true. Because yeah, I, I don't play video games, but I love to come out here and fight and quest. Yeah, that is it's, the interesting it's thing something I to do here in Ocala is they have quests. That gives yeah. me something to do <laughs> since I can't quite fight as much anymore. Because even last uh, weekend when you were like, hey, you want to go to this event? I was kind of like, I don't really... Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing about events, <laughs> like, even with the fighting and stuff like that. Like, there's people that are like, oh, I'm really not feeling the fighting as much, but there's side quests and side things to yeah. make gold, and then you can still, at the end of the day, buy out the bank, and everybody's like, we've been fighting for these, and like, sorry, this yeah. guy played all the games, got all the stuff. And, and like, that's, what, that's <laughs> what I did last weekend. On the way here, when he told me it was over at 6, I was like, I should have took my vehicle, I might get bored. And then it was like, what, 5 o'clock? And we're like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, it's going to yeah. be over soon. <laughs> it's getting dark. We got to we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, the man responsible for this, from what I understand, is this dude over here. This guy right here. Hi. <laughs> hey, Nico. Nico, Hi. yeah. I'm familiar with. We're both familiar with. Uh, you are, you started this? I did not. I okay. was one of the original um, council members. But okay. it was made by a buddy of mine named Tim. Mm -hmm. And a couple of his friends, they all... Um, oh, who I've seen on the Facebook? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so he originally made it. I was here like the second weekend. Okay. But he's since moved to Tallahassee. Gotcha. And then the other okay. guys that were part of the council left to do DAG stuff. So they're doing their own DAG thing. So I'm the last original council member. So I wouldn't say that it is completely 100% mine, but since then it has been. Okay. But I, I do have my council of right. nine or ten or however many people I got in there now. Which last weekend they were primarily the quest givers, right? Correct. Yeah. And which you'll see a lot of them in the video. Uh, like the, the gentleman with the, the elf ears. Correct. Really good elf ears, too. Yes. They're pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, So tell us a little bit about your character. So my name in game is Nicholas Oscar, which we shortened to Nico, which is also my actual name. Just because... Okay. I had a character name, and everybody just kept calling me Nico, and I was like, you know what? Bump it. Nicholas Oscar, Nico. There you go, yeah. So, my character was originally um, a member of this Vardric army, and the Vardric Empire was killed by um, Penthos, this other kingdom, and has since, Vardric has since disbanded. 
and Penthos, who was one of the other guys that left to go to DAG, um, you know, they, I guess, disbanded because they're no longer there. But okay. for, the, for story purposes, Penthos is still, you know, right. an enemy of the state. Kind of right. Thing. They, can, they can come back. Correct. <laughs> so um, my character wants to get revenge for Vardrick. So as since um, whenever he was, after Vardrick had, like, disbanded and everything, we went to, or my character founded the church. The church was, like, overrun with monsters and I helped them clean up shop pretty much and create kind of like a hub for Vargric to rebuild itself. So the Healing Church became a, a big, um, like, not necessarily like government, but a place where people can like go for aid and stay for help and et cetera, okay. et cetera. So my character was the pronounced warden of that church and I protected the church and protected the church's people and we killed monsters and bad guys and. And this all happened, like, in, in real events. life? Right, yes. in events, right. So we had our first event ever, which was the Fall of Vardrick. And then um, we we did a tournament-styled event for the new king of Penthos. Okay. And then after that, we had a... It's been so long, I'm trying to remember. Um, we had a lich fight. So we had this healing church, and the healing church came to... You know, was like, hey, by the way, there's this big bad lich guy. He's summoning all these bad dudes and all this, this, and that. So we did the lich event, and that was like a huge success. It was probably one of our best events that we ever had. Was that the same lich from last weekend? No. Okay. Um, but that was a really good event way back yeah. when. And have since then have done um, numerous other tournaments. We did a Siren's Quest. We did a, uh, we had the Ringmaster come, and the Ringmaster presented us monsters for us to fight which is another really good event, was more recent. And then we had the tournament to appoint a new warden, since I'm creating a new army. Right. And we had the Ceremony of Sealing, that was uh, Stitches' intro. So, a little backstory on the sword. The sword is... harbors a monster inside of it. So the monster is cursed and sealed into this sword. Okay, so and, like Soul Edge. Yes. Soul Caliber? Okay. Sort of. So what happened was a long, long time ago, before any of us were around, um, this creature was the king of the other world. And he found a way to get out of the other world and tried to consume all of the souls of our realm that we exist in. So a band of heroes banded together and defeated him and sealed him into the sword and then used the sword to stitch the gate shut. Ah. So, so a long, long time ago, all of that happened. And there's this ceremony of sealing that happens where we redo the power over the, the weapon so that okay. it can contain him and contain the gate. So that went wrong. I, my character, grabbed the sword, was instantly possessed, killed a bunch of people. Then the new King of the Darkness, since Stitches, as we call him, was sealed away. The new King of Darkness, Takai, came out and killed a whole bunch of people. Okay. He's like a huge Anubis kind of guy. Okay, and there were followers of Takai at the last event. Correct. So, Takai had stolen some of their souls, being the new King of Darkness. That's like his power. He can command souls and such. So, he um, wants to keep his spot. Stitches wants to get his spot back. Okay. I want to kill Penthos. That's the, the overarching story is Takai wants to kill me because I have Stitches. Stitches wants to kill Takai because Takai, or he wants to be in Takai's spot. He wants his old spot back. I want to kill Penthos. The church doesn't want any part of any of it because all of that's <laughs> evil. Right. So that's pretty much the overarching story behind both my character and the rest of the, the LARP. Okay. And we have like some like side quests, non-canon stuff. Like the sure. Ringmaster has nothing to do with the overarching story, but it's fun to come out and fight monsters. And then last weekend, the adventurers actually traveled to the other world to defeat a lich, right? Correct. The okay. lich was defending this particular relic that was part of Stitches' armory. Was that Stitches' skull? Technically, this is Stitches' skull. Okay. But that was his, like, helmet that he wore. Gotcha. Okay, that's right. You said, I think that's in the video, actually. I think I recorded that. And you'll actually see the, the big siege. There was a big siege, and then we actually had proper parties go through and fight the lich. Correct. That was probably some of the coolest things I've ever filmed. That's it, it was pretty neat. <laughs> it, was intense. it was intense to be yeah. down there. 
to be honest with you, that wasn't our original plan. Right. Our plan was to have everyone get their beads from doing their quests, and once you have a full set of beads, then you can go into the the other world and fight the lich. So it was supposed to be parties of three to five fighting the lich at a time. But right. when some people came up to me and were like, listen, we're not going to let you go. Right, I heard the that. Gate. And I was like, okay, scrap that idea. Let's go ahead and just have everyone who wants to oppose me stand at the gate, and everyone who wants to help me stand with me. We're going to go through this right. gate. And that's why we had the big siege and the big fight. Okay. Yeah, I overheard some of the talking, like the, the Kai folks were telling you, mm -hmm. like, why, we're not going to let you go through this. I was like... Oh shit! Yeah, there's, there's, like, things happening. <laughs> there's stuff going down I, right yeah, now. I love there's like actual factions fighting here. <laughs> That's the whole plan was to have like yeah. everyone uh, not necessarily do what they want to do, but do what their character feel, felt like they should right. do. Right. So not if you don't want to help me get demonic pieces, that's understandable. I'm right. not doing them for evil purposes, but they're still evil in nature. Right. So it's a lot of gray stuff. So it's it's all up to how you, as a character or as a person, sure. would say, I'm not going into the other world and risking my life for you. Bump that. Right. Versus, yeah. you know, yeah, let's go let's go do it. There's money involved. Yeah, there's money. Mm -hmm. and, That's what uh, Blood Pack was here for, for money. Well, yeah. Blood Pack, we're, uh, my unit, we're uh, relic hunters anyway. Right. And to be totally honest, I kind of want that helmet. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> you can want whatever you want, but you gotta fight me for it. We would, we would like it. So, just to, so you know, we like she relics. We like <laughs> our ways are old and dark. Now, obviously, because so. Lance lost his bone, and it took us like an hour to find it. It was a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> it was a big deal. Well, I know for our, bones. we're thinking about for our next event having a kind of enchanter character mm -hmm. to make relics. So Ooh. if you do the right things and get the right amount of money, you can make your own relics. Or kill the people who make them and take them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more of like a knowledge thing. Right. So killing the guy who would Okay, gotcha. Do it, that kinda, makes sense. Probably not. Yeah. But Bite the hand that feeds. Last people. weekend, there were people stealing stuff. <laughs> there were. Actually, that was one of the quests, because I, I was at yeah, NPC. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sort of. And my job was to make sure nobody got the, uh, the coin right. hanging off my belt. And we actually had a I don't want to say an altercation, but that's what happened. Like, it was an altercation. It was an in-game altercation. Yeah, it was an in-game. Yeah, exactly. An in-game altercation. We had a guy steal, try to steal, uh, oh, what is this? Course guard. Course guard uh, gem. Or, mm -hmm. Sorry. I do remember this. Yes. Yeah, was, yeah. Actually, I, that, that almost became an out-of-game <laughs> altercation. <laughs> I thought you were talking about with, with me. Uh, I don't know his name, and I wish I did because uh, he's one of my favorite characters out here. The guy with the uh, the braids over the top of his head, shaved sides. Oh, um, he came at me a couple times to steal the. Uh, he took my coin off my belt once, and Korsgar killed him immediately. I was like, "Give it back!" Huh. And we were over I here getting ready to fight the Cyclops, and I was asking, uh, I was asking a question, like an out of game question, uh, and I just noticed he was sneaking up beside me. And I just grabbed his wrist right before he grabbed that coin. I was like, nah, nah, nah <laughs> not this time, buddy. <laughs> um, That's great. So, yeah, so even as a non combatant, there was a lot of fun stuff to do. And I think yeah. I try to make it so it's it's fun to watch, too. It, it was. It and really was. You don't even really have to understand the rules to just see people running at each other and beating the snot out of each other. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And that's what we try to be is like kind of a melding of not as intense as. Dag is with their like meta gaming and you know got to be the best at fighting ever. Right, right. But it, it also let like the nerdier side of people who want to like throw spells and be a magical wizard or mm -hmm. a powerful cleric or whatever the way, they want to be, they can do that right. and it be viable. The way but, I saw it was Dag to me is like the League of Legends esports, whereas the Lion Door is just like a MMO game. Yes. It's very, it's casual, like, that so we're serious accurate. about the quests and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's also, like, no one, I know one's going to yell at you at Dag, but <laughs> it's, I don't know. it's casual. Yeah. It was um, a lot of fun. So what is the next event you guys are doing? We're Do actually, know? we're making it in the works now, because okay. I, I know for a fact that we put up the, the poll on our page, and right. a lot of people wanted to do story-based. The Lion Door Medieval Combat on Facebook. Yeah, Thalion Door Medieval Combat. But, um, How do you say it? Thalion Door. Thalion Door? Okay, I like that more than the Lion Door. <laughs> but, That's just um, how I spell it. So. <laughs> that is how you spell it. It's the easy as it. T-H-A-Lion-D-O-R. That's how I remember it. <laughs> yeah. But um, 
I wanted to do another Ringmaster event. That was okay. my plan for like an arena style fight monsters with your party kind of event. But a lot of people wanted to do another story event, which are the hardest to make. So oh, yeah. we're definitely like working on it. I know somebody wants to, um, one of my guys came up because we do, I make the events, but we have other people that make, have ideas and we encourage people to say, hey, if you want to do an event that's based around your character, you can do that. Okay. You just tell us what to do, and if it fits in the story, or we'll mold it to fit in the story. Like the Takai faction. Correct. And it just goes in the story. Now we have an event. So one of our guys wanted to do a enchanter kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, man? Let's do it. We just got to figure out, figure out a way to do... Because I know another thing that happened at the last event that not a lot of people know is the new warden died in the other world. So his soul belongs to Takai. Wait, okay. so who is the new warden, by the way? The warden the is the guy with the, the red cloak around his... Like, it's one of these, but it's red. His name's Jaden. What like kind of weapon did he... Okay. He's like short dual swords. Taller guy with uh, curly hair. The younger kid. Okay, I know. I know who he is. Yeah. He okay. died in the other world. So now the warden's soul is trapped with Takai. So the <laughs> okay. church wants to do some kind of something to get him back. Right. Or to find a new warden. So that's their their objective for the next event is to either save Jaden or um, find a new warden. Okay. My objective is nothing. Like, I don't have any... I could put another relic in to try to go get, or I could... Um, you are now do, Luke Skywalker. Pretty much. <laughs> you, I have, you have no faction. <laughs> yeah, I am my own faction. So my faction have no peace in getting the warden back or... Right, it doesn't matter to you one way or another. Correct. So, so gotcha. we were thinking of something that we could do where all of the factions are involved. That way everyone has something to do, whether it's fighting another faction, whether it's fighting Takai, whether it's fighting um, monsters or whatever. But right. we want everybody to be involved and everyone to do the same thing that everyone else is doing, which is why factions and story-driven quests and all mm -hmm. this other stuff is so difficult to do. Because you have to plan all of that and make sure Ultimate. no one's just sitting around. Yeah, make like, sure the cannon board. is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Uh, if you're in the Florida area, I highly recommend it. There's Thaliandor, there's Dag, there's... It's fun. Amp Guard. Amp Guard. The weapons are pretty straightforward to make. Th this one's obviously more complicated. Uh, to be honest with you, not really. No? No. It, what Let's you get do a good is look at it. You make it a shell of the weapon, as I would call it. So, in, in here, not that you can feel it, but there is a... Uh, this, this shape cut out in a certain with a certain kind of foam then the core is in the middle so that shape i made four times because it's an inch wide core so the, the foam that we used on the inside is a half inch so you make two of those and then half inch on either side so what it is is it's from the bottom up there's one gray foam two blue foams and then a gray foam on top of it all of the same shape just the blue foam has the core shape cut out of it so it makes almost like a sandwich okay mm -hmm to fit around the core, and then you just put layers of blue around it for striking surface. This being a katana has more on, or a katana one-sided blade, has more padding on this side than it does on this side. Okay. Right. And we will probably, we might as well make a tutorial on how to build LARP weapons. Because I'm wanting to. Because when I got together with my unit last night, uh, I forget how long they had been working, but they did seven swords last night. Wow. So seven what what are considered blue swords, which are sh basically short swords. Mm -hmm. They had seven done and two or three spears almost. Finished. We have pictures of like when you guys started doing this. With I know the pool, that uh, the pool we have noodles. on our yeah. <laughs> we have on our Thaliandor page. I just released a video on how to make like a simple blue sword. Okay. Oh, that's right. You did, mm -hmm. didn't you? That's right. So look up Thaliandor on YouTube. Mm-hmm. The audio is kind of rough in it because I was using my phone, but ah, it's, okay. Uh, <laughs> It is a, but it's there. Yeah, it's a. There's also there's a lot of videos wave. on YouTube as well. Oh yeah, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward to get into. Get a weapon, get some garb, come out, have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we have tons, tons of loner weapons. Like right, that's what know. they were saying last week as they were trying to get me and him to fight. <laughs> They're yeah. like, oh, go go get stuff. <laughs> I have like upwards of like twelve blue swords, like four or five red swords. I have three or four poles, shields arrows the whole nine yards so if you're interested in doing it it's all you have to do is show up that's the it's free all you have to do is come out here we give you free stuff to good. use free, free is good, good. <laughs> free is good in today's day and age free is super good yeah 
Yeah, and do you guys take donations? I don't remember. I know we you did do. a year ago. We do. We do take donations. It's not required. Right. It is thoroughly appreciated because <laughs> right. a lot of this stuff comes out of our pocket. But um, and you guys also have a uh, a shop as well that seems to open up at the end at the end of the event. Oh yeah, that mm-hmm. was all John's Scores Guards. Cloak is Corsgar. like really nice. Corsgar. Mm-hmm. Oh god, yeah, he, he loves it. <laughs> he didn't put yeah. that. He didn't take that thing off the rest of the night. No, <laughs> awesome. That's perfect. And uh, like we donated some materials. Uh, some of those blues that we built. Uh, the other, I didn't build. It, I was just messing around. But some of those blues we built, I believe, are going to your store. We're going to donate. Oh, that would be store. awesome. Um, we're working on a bunch of stuff to donate to you guys because you guys are cool. I so, appreciate it, man. Thanks. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's fun. We we felt welcome. Good. Yeah, and that's so, the other thing, too. This is a very welcoming atmosphere. Very uh, family-friendly, too. Can we talk about the... We've talked about the other game on podcasts before, haven't I'm we? I'm sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems more intense, but I, I don't have first-hand experience anymore. So. I mean the other other game. Oh. <laughs> that one. We'll save that for another show. Yeah, that'll be a, <laughs> we'll save that that for be a whole other show. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys. Uh, There's going to be more to this podcast, but uh, this will end the video portion. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nico. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you guys soon. You guys take it easy. You too.